Well, looking at our children's rainbow garden reminds me how much impact you can have in a small area, especially if you choose your colors accordingly. Now, in the rainbow garden, when it was planted this spring, they put the dwarf type of impatiens down at the bottom and the taller ones at the back so that when you look at it, all of the color is gives you an impact all at one time instead of a flat surface. Well today on Oklahoma Gardening we want to start a new series on small landscapes. Those small yards that have tremendous impact in an unusual way. And last week we visited with a lovely lady in Tulsa who has filled her yard from front to back with color. Well, we stopped at the home of Mrs. Teresa Tucker and we're sitting here on the porch enjoying the shade and looking at her beautiful front yard. She has a collection of flowers that I think are outstanding, especially at the end of the summer when a lot of us think that our gardening days are over until it cools off. Mrs. Tucker, how'd you get started with a, a beautiful yard like this? And I see no lawn anywhere. Well, when we moved here, uh, it was in grass and uh, it, it, it just kind of happened uh, as, oh, it took a matter of quite a number of years, and the little plot out in front here, uh, just dug it up last year, and uh, I got down to the end, and there was, oh, several feet that was still in the in sod, and um, my neighbor said to me, she said, well, what did you leave that little patch for? And I said, well, my energy gave out. I just couldn't go any further. But uh, So you've it, built this up over the years? Over the years, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, really wasn't any any plan at all. It uh, wasn't any plan at all as far as, as, far as the flowers were concerned. Uh, but you the, had to plant most of these? They didn't well, uh, they, they were originally planted. Uh, and some of them, I have beautiful, beautiful uh, wild columbines all over the place here that bloom early in the year. And I got them so long ago that I don't even remember where I got them. Oh. And uh, then I got some lovely uh, red columbines that are wild that came from up in Arkansas. And uh, all of them were originally planted at one time or another, but uh, primarily, uh, with the exception of the zinnias, and they, they do seed themselves a little, somewhat to my surprise, um, uh, reseed themselves every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, this right here, oh, a month or so ago, this bed was a solid mass of the uh, Rudbeckia daisies, the, uh, oh, yeah, the, the yellow Gloriosa ones. daisies. Yeah, the Gloriosa daisies. And this was just a solid mass of, and they're, they're kind of ebbing now. And, uh, oh, so, so I, I sort of think, uh, like you said, that uh, it's really uh, the flowers have done well, considering, as mm -hmm. you said, this is, the, is almost the low ebb of the flower growing yeah. season. Well, I know a and, lot of viewers are going to wonder, looking at a, a yard like this full of flowers, your entire yard, front and back and side yards, is all flowers. Um, a person who mows their lawn spends maybe an hour to an hour and a half a week. How much time are you spending out in the garden every week, roughly? Oh, maybe 10 hours. 10 hours, okay. Ten, yeah, 10 or 12. Well, that gives uh, you an idea that there, if this is, if you're gonna convert your yard to this system, um, it's more enjoyable time, but there is, it takes a little longer to take care of a yard like this than than just pushing a lawnmower. I, I wouldn't rec it to anyone, recommend it to anyone uh, that didn't like to work with flowers. And of course, okay. if you didn't like to work with flowers, you wouldn't be interested in the first place. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's right. So uh, it does take a lot of time, but uh, it, it's not uh, it's not really work for me. It's This is something that I love to do. And I so can see that. I, I don't, count it in the category of work. Great. Uh, well, when I, when I first met Mrs. Tucker, she told me that she doesn't think there's anything very imaginative about pushing a lawnmower, but as you can see around her yard, there's a great deal of imagination. One of that is your, your terracotta heads that you're growing the begonias in. Oh. <laughs> Aren't they? Uh, I bought the, uh, are you familiar with, this sounds like I'm doing a little advertising, but I'm not, uh, with Smith Hawkins catalog? Oh, yes. Right. Well, uh -huh. that's where they came from, was Smith Hawkins, okay. and, and I do think they're a 
I think they're very attractive. They really are. Uh -huh. They're wonderful. Well, uh, you also have some ferns. Now, I notice you've, you've positioned things so that they're going to be in shade when they need to be, and then the full sun plants are out in full and, sun. And that just kind of was a happenstance, too. So things I have thrived where, they, where they're going to thrive. Yes, yes. And, of course, the... Uh, uh, there's there's a lovely little uh, maidenhair fern in the back uh -huh. that has done so well because it's that was just kind of a happenstance. That's wonderful. Well, uh -huh. last of all, how often it's uh, it's early September. How often do you have to water the yard? Oh, it gets along in August. Uh, oh, maybe every other day. Every other day. Yeah, it takes a lot of watering. It does. Um, well, it's uh, worth it though. Cause it's just, it's well, it's beautiful. it's just a. It's just sheer pleasure for me. Well, I can it's see just that. something that I thoroughly enjoy. Great. Well, I so. sure want to thank you for sharing it with us and, and letting the viewers get a, a bird's eye view of, of such a yard. As well, this. I appreciate your coming by and your enthusiasm. Well, great. It's, it's, it's so much fun to have people um, who get as much pleasure out of it as, as you do. When we finished our taping with Mrs. Tucker, one point she wanted us to make with the viewers is that a lot of that 10 hours a week that she spends in her flower garden is spent deadheading the flowers. With coleus, of course, that would be to keep them putting out lots of nice foliage because once they bloom, they go to seed and they're not going to grow anymore and they'll look really rank. So if you're planning a large scale flower garden like Mrs. Tucker has, strike a balance. Have some coleus that have big impact and these standard types that, that blossom and, and count on the fact that you're going to have to do some maintenance, but also consider things like impatiens and begonias that don't require quite so much labor and that way you'll have plenty of color and not be spending all of your time deadheading the flowers.